Hello, people. Um, got lots to tell you today. Notice my new logo. My daughter's finished my logos. This is one of them. I'm really happy with that. Uh, this week I have done the Cowardly Lion set that I have been trying to do for an entire year now. So that will finish off my Wizard of Oz collection and we're going to get started with medium length square tips. I'm using mostly Beatles polish today with a couple, uh, well, with one. That one, now I take that back. There's two of the, uh, the gel polish ones I usually use, the Cloud Vite, Cloud Beauty, Cloud Vite, whatever it is. I don't know how to pronounce this stuff, and I'm too hot right now to worry about it. Uh, we're going to go in with, we've started with this pale yellow. I'm going to do like two-thirds of this one and the ring finger, because we're going to be ombre those. And the pinkies will both be the yellow. Oh boy, it's hot. I just came in from watering up my plants outside. And man, I'm sweating like crazy here. Okay, and then this is the one of these. This is a tan color. And that will be the top half of those ombres and this middle one. Now, on the other hand, I have reversed the color on this middle finger and the thumb. So, on the other hand, the thumb will be the tan and the middle finger will be the pale yellow also. Now, on to other big news while you're watching me do this. Um, I got my kitties over the weekend, this last weekend, so I have two baby kitties. I meant to pop a picture in here uh, at the top of this for you guys to see, but I forgot. So maybe next time I'll probably, hopefully I'll remember. But anyway, they're part of the reason why I'm extremely distracted this weekend. I'm making numerous mistakes on these nails, and I had to do so many things over and over again. One of which were the ombres. Not on this one, but... Um, okay, no, you may have noticed at the beginning uh, of this part of the ombres, I'm using a different ombre brush. This one has long wispy bristles at the end, as opposed to the ones that are kind of cut off and more squared off looking. Uh, this one was a really super cheapo one that came within that set of those, those different shaped petal brushes that I got recently that I used a while back. And I'm really loving this ombre brush. It, it works so nice with those longer, wispier bristles than the other one. So I'm, this is going to probably be my go-to for a while. And after I just bought nice new ombre brushes too, and, and they just I just didn't like them. I had to doctor one of them up, and I hadn't used it since I did some cutting on it. So I don't know how it's going to go either. But this one is working great, so I'm going to stick with it. Anyway... We're just going to keep, uh, I had some fluff on there. Now where I ran into problems with these is, is losing focus because not this one, but when I did the offhand, when I put it into cure, I hit the 30 second button instead of the 90 second that I thought I did. So when I got the other one out, and I we're under the second coat, FYI. But when I got the other hand out and I started to do the ombre, I got the polish on and I started, you know, flicking back and forth with the ombre brush. And all of a sudden I was getting big chunks of, um, like, half-cured polish. And like, what the heck? So I thought, okay, I'll just wipe it off and try it again. But when I wiped it off, all of it came off down to the bare nails. So I'm like, well, you dummy, you must not have hit the right button. And you didn't cure these fully, so I had to redo the ombre nails that are on the other hand that you're not seeing. But in the end, it came out. But that was just one thing I had to do over again because I wasn't fully paying attention. I just want to play with those kitties and hold them while they're tiny babies. It just, it's making me crazy. As I, I've not accomplished very much. It's taken me probably easily twice as long to get done with anything this week as it normally would because... I just can't focus. <laughs> they only stay babies for a short time, so I want to I want to get all the holding and playing in now before they get bigger and they don't want all that anymore. So anyway, um, we're getting on. This, this is the second coat, as I said. Going to be the same as the first. Okay, 
and I think I show the ombre on here, yeah. Yeah, I know this video is a little longer than what I've normally been doing lately, but there was a lot of different parts to this. There was a lot of trial and error and a lot of experimenting that happened during this set, too. But as I could not come up with anything else to do for the Cowardly Lion, this is all I could think of. So I'm just so happy to have this whole collection done. I've still got my fruity collection to, to work on here and there. Um, and I've got an idea for two other ones, but I'm not sure which one I'm going to do first. I'm thinking of doing a gnome collection, and I'm also going to do a zodiac one. So if you guys have any preference, let me know in the comments. And there's another hair. I was pulling hairs out of these two. A lot of that you're not going to see because I cut out a lot of stuff. This ended up being a three afternoon set because it took me so long. The first day I hardly accomplished anything. The second day I got almost all of it done. I just had to finish. Uh, on the last day I had to finish putting the embellishments on. But that's how I determine how I'm going to price my stuff too. By A, how big of a pain in the butt was it to do, and B, how long did it take me? So I haven't come up, I am not pricing anything currently because I don't have a valid website at the moment. My daughter's still working on it and I'm hoping it's coming soon. I did get my logos as I showed you at the beginning, so we'll be seeing those. I'm probably going to keep the one I used on here as my regular one now. But I've got different variations of that same one, so I may test some out. We'll see. Anyway, we're just going on with the ombre, flicking this back and forth. And you're going to wipe your brush off occasionally. Now I have sped this up, so... I tried to speed up as much stuff in here as I could to try to keep the video to a little bit, shortened a little bit even though it's still pretty long. And if you're new to doing ombres, after you are happy with the way it looks like this, after going through this whole process of flicking this back and forth, you want to let it sit there for, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute, until the uh, polish kind of levels itself out and gets smooths itself out so you don't get those ridge lines. And then that's in there to cure. Now we're moving on to... Uh, I believe this is the first part of the Courage Metal, and it is. Now, I used this mirror polish. Now, this is a regular polish. This is not gel, and I used this because it had the, a nice color of gold that I wanted. In hindsight, later on, you're going to see me mixing some um, mica gold, mica powder, and making my own gold because uh, I decided it would have been easier to paint with um, the gel than it was the, with this because this obviously is going to dry on its own and it was drying up quickly on me just getting this, this base part of this metal done that I did. I was working off of a picture of the original metal from the, the original movie. Uh, I was going to show the picture but I forgot to put it in so you guys can google it if you want to see it but I think you'll get the idea. Now, there was a lot more detail on here that obviously I could not do with my limited hand painting skills. And surprise, surprise, I'm not real happy with how this metal comes out. Those of you that have watched my videos, that is not going to shock you at all. But it is what it is, and, uh, you know, I did the best I could. <laughs> I want to start off with a dotting tool because it kind of has, on the ends, it kind of has this, like, three... This like rounded three prong, like not prong, but I don't want to call it a Florida Lee, but it's got a just a roundy end with three little round bits on there. I was trying to make that one bigger, and then I decided I didn't like it. I think that one might get wiped off in a minute. There were some of these that I ended up wiping off at one point or another and redoing because I wasn't happy with how they ended up. That might be one of them, I don't remember now. 
anyway, I wanted to get this on with this mirror polish being regular polish. I wanted to give it a, a good time to sit and dry on its own before I did anything else to it which is why I'm doing this right now, and then we're going to set this aside and, and skip over to something else while it dries good. Now right there is where I went wrong on that one. It's too, uh, I should have moved it up farther. It's too close to the middle, and I, that's one of the ones I end up taking off, I'm sure, because that, that branch was too short, and so is the one that's facing to the left side right now. But two of those I'm going to wipe off after I get this partially painted and do them again. There was quite a bit of that. I tried to edit out the most of uh, my wiping things off and starting over, but I did leave some of them in just so you guys can see how things normally go. They, they don't go as smoothly as you'll see in a lot of finished videos. There's a lot of trial and error with things, and I like to leave them in just so you guys see that it's not always as easy as people make it look. And also, what then you know what to do if you have to, if you've made some of the mistakes I had, then then you see how to fix them, or you see uh, what not to do basically, and <laughs> so you don't make the mistakes. Now this was okay for me to paint because I could paint these big sections rather quickly, but when I get to the finer detail stuff, I'm painting. That's when I mixed up a different gold, and that's in hindsight, if I did this again, I would just mix up that gold and use that for the whole thing and, and just eliminate this mirror polish out of the equation. Well, it does give a nice finish, and I did like the way it looked. It just was not practical for me to be painting for any length of time as it, as it dries real quick or fairly quickly. I think I've said before, but pretty much the only thing I'm using regular polish for these days are my toes because I'm too lazy to put my lamp down off the table onto the floor to cure, cure them. And if I did use gel on my toes, then I would have to use my e-file to get it off. And I'm not flexible enough to hold my feet up there long enough on my lap to do that anymore. See how the sides are uneven? This is when I decided, all right, two of those sides got to come off and I got to lengthen those. So I'm going to wipe them off, and frankly, I think I wiped off one of the wrong ones, so I ended up repainting three of them when I only needed to do two, but that's just was typical of my concentration. This was day two of my working on stuff in here at this point. Ah, okay. I believe I'm finding, uh, I had to get out acetone because that's regular polish and I had to get something that was going to get that off of there. I did stain a little bit of it yellow, but I think I got most of it off and then you can't, you can't see it in the end. Now I meant to do the one at the top of there that's at the top facing right now, which is really the, is really the free edge, but I end up doing the one that's near the cuticle edge, so that's when I had to. Uh, that's when I had to put U3 over instead of 2. Lack of focus. I did have a pretty nice trip uh, out to visit my folks this last time. Everybody behaved themselves for the most part. I say that because sometimes my parents can be kind of like the Bickersons. Uh, anyway, I'm going back out that way uh, tomorrow, which is Saturday. Well, when you guys see this video, it'll be today for you, but for me now it's tomorrow, but my, my oldest son's birthday is tomorrow, so we're going out there for that. He's going to be 45. I can hardly believe it. I've told my kids, you got to start doing your birthdays in reverse because you're making me feel awfully old now. Anyway, I think I'm going to be getting ready to put these guys back on now. And here we go.
Okay, we're just doing the three dots again. And this time I'm going to make sure I get that one down closer to the bottom where it's supposed to be. I think that other one now is going to have to come off. Maybe not, we'll see. Oh yeah, that's the one I took off and then I realized, wait a minute, that wasn't the one I was supposed to do. It should have been the bottom one. Ay, ay, ay. So now we got to clean that bottom one off and do that one again. Well, I hope you guys are all staying cool out there. I know I'm not. <laughs> Every time I go out to water, I give myself a little bit of a spray down with a hose just to, and by time, when I first go out there, by the time I finished watering and I come back in, I'm already dry. And I don't have all that much stuff to water, so that's how hot it is around here. Okay. I'm surprised I didn't stick my finger in that wet part that I just did up there and smear it, the way things were going. On top of which, it didn't want to stay on the stupid nail stand either. Now, recently I tried using um, the, 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 uh, the little double-sided tape stickers that you use to put press-on nails on. Some people use those because uh, I had heard that that was better for keeping them on the nail stands. And it was, it did work great, but I had to replace them every, with every set that I did. And that was getting to be a pain in the butt and I didn't like that. So now I have gone back to uh, the blue tack. Well, mine is not blue, it's white, it's white or gray, but it's basically it's the blue tack. In case you want to do press-ons, you want to use nail stands, that's you go to your hardware store, go down the aisle with the framing stuff, and you'll see those, uh, I think it's Scotch brand that has the, um, the little wall mount things where you can hang things on your wall with this stuff, and then it doesn't leave a mark when you pull it off. It's basically that's the stuff you need, and they, they sell little like refill packs of just that kind of clay-looking stuff. Well, that's what we use to stick these onto the the uh, nail stands and for the most part they work pretty good I mean I can use I can reuse them over and over probably oh I'm gonna say maybe 10 times before I have to put new ones under there and usually what happens is I somehow manage to either get polish in them or or just the dust from from you know filing and whatnot gets on there and then it gives it it's not so sticky anymore Eventually, I am going to be done playing around here with this. And when I am, we're going to set it aside and let it dry really well. I think we're good now. And the longer it dries, as you guys saw with the Tin Man set where I used the silver version of this polish, the longer it sits to dry, the shinier it gets. So we just want to let it dry thoroughly. And hopefully I'm going to move it before I do anything crazy and bump it or smear it. Okay, moving on. Let's go. Everybody's got things to do here. Okay, now I got my one of my little acrylic molds. I'm going to make a red bow for the... Uh, I'm just trying to see which one size-wise I'm going to want for that. Originally I was going to do the biggest one, but then I decided that's going to be too big. Um for when the, when the lion goes through the Emerald City and he gets his makeover and he has all those curly Q ringlets and uh, a big bow in his hair. Well, that's what this nail is going to represent. So I'm going to make the bow. And you guys have seen me do this, but in case you're new here, I'm just going to use this little acrylic, acrylic slash resin mold, I guess. So you could use it for either. Um, just going to put gel polish in there. Now, now I've got way too much in there, but we'll deal with that in a minute. 
but you just want to get it in, get it smoothed out so that's touching all the edges and it'll fill itself in if you just get it to the edges. And then I'm going to need to go and clean this up because I've got, as I said, too much in there where it's spilled over in a couple places. At some point, I'm going to scoop a little bit of it back out with a brush. And then we'll clean it up. And then it will go in the lamp. I will put it in there as it is, as it sits right there for 90 seconds. And then I will flip it over the other way. So the, 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 what's bottom now will be on the top. I'll give that another 90 second cure. And then after that, it should be ready to come out. Now this is just me cleaning up around the edge. You'll see that there's, there's so much polish that it's just continuing to run over. So I think this is where I scoop some of it out. Or not. Yeah, there we go. I just took a chunk of it out of there. Now, now when it comes back, it'll level itself in there and it'll be it will not be so bulky. What we don't want is a big bulge on the out on the top side when we take it out because we need it to lay flat on the nail. And I've just got alcohol on here and I'm just going to go along the edges and scoop it back towards the center just to make sure there's no overhanging stuff because if there is then you have to cut it off and that's a whole extra step that nobody's got time for. Okay, I think it's ready, and we're going to put it in, like I told you, 90 seconds. While that's doing that, we're going to go start working on the one that's going to have the hairs on it, the rest of the part of it. Okay, we're going to be using the carving gel. And I got a couple of toothpicks. I really needed something a little skinnier than these toothpicks because they really came out fatter than I wanted them to be. I was really going for more tiny, delicate ones, but that is not what I ended up with. But, oh well, it is what it is. So we're going to take some of this out. Now I'm working on a silicone mat right here that's not just flat onto my desk. Well, you could do it in your hand, too. I'm trying to get this to be a uniform shape here. It's going to make some little, like little snakes out of it. Now I thought it was going to stick nicely on this toothpick and I could just easily wind it around. Of course that was not the case. It gave me all kinds of trouble. After I did the first couple it got to be a bit easier but these first couple took me a while. I think the more you handle this carving gel the the kind of wetter and stickier it starts to get. Now see, I was starting to wind it around, but it didn't want to stay stuck to the top. Okay, I finally got it on there, and now I'm going to put it in the lamp for two minutes. Now with this first one, I just held the toothpick in there, and I kept twirling the toothpick in my fingers the whole time. Now gently, now it's been cured, gently I'm going to loosen the ends very gently both ends and then I'm going to slide it off of there from the middle and there we go. Now when we get, once I get this second one on here, uh, I went with a different strategy because I didn't want to sit there and waste two minutes um, holding that in the lamp. So once we get this one on the toothpick, well you'll see how I'm going to deal with that. As they say, necessity is the mother of invention. And so is lack of patience for me sitting here holding that thing in the lamp. I was trying to get that one a little bit longer and skinnier. In, in, in the end, it didn't really come out much different than the first one. But the, second, the two second ones I made, I did make them quite a bit longer, as you can see from the finished, uh, finished piece trying to get a hold of stuff without squishing it at the same time and holding it in place proved to be um, a real exercise in patience of which I quickly ran out. So 
See, it's a good thing you guys don't get the the uh, the audio that's recorded while this while I'm doing these because it would not be good. <laughs> On top of the fact that I have music blasting, uh, you would just hear a lot of cursing through a lot of these things. I was trying to figure out how to get them to be closer together, so it was like a tighter spiral and just wasn't wasn't working. I need I need if I do this thing again for something, I'm gonna have to find a skinnier uh, toothpick. Like maybe a needle would have worked better, or a pin. All right, now what I am going to do if, as soon as I'm done playing with that is I got my my brush out that I used to brush off um, glitter, like loose glitter, and um, when I'm embossing, you know, stuff after you've cured it, you're brushing the loose stuff off. I'm fishing around for it. You'll see it in a second. It's just one of those, those little, the pink brush you guys see me use a lot. Of course I'm out of shot but I'm just what I'm doing is just sticking this thing down into the bristle area so I can lay that whole thing inside of the lamp and that way I don't have to hold it while it's curing I very carefully had to put it in there because it wanted to keep falling over okay now this guy I believe is ready to come out of here now this mold, this particular mold, they're supposed to be silicone, but this one I'm pretty sure is not, or if it is, it's not the right kind, or it's not mixed right, something was wrong with it. It's more like just rubber. So the stuff wants to always stick in here, and it's always really hard to get out of this particular one. Normally the stuff pops easily right out of the molds. This one was a little bit of a pain. I had to pry it out. But in the end, I got what I needed out of there. So there's the bow. That we're going to use and being that that's gel polish it's still flexible it's not hard like the acrylic so you can bend it a little now, now this was me starting on the next one of the longer ones I think I could have made those a bit skinnier too I think this is the last one I'm going to show and then you'll uh, and then it'll go I'll move on to something else here I swear this stuff had a mind of its own. It just didn't. I really thought it was going to stick on there nicely with the toothpick, being that it's, you know, slightly got some kind of a grain a little bit and it's not shiny, but it did not. Okay. So I've got that one. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it in there in that brush like I did. I'm going to cure it for two minutes. There's that one. Okay, I'm, you're not going to see me make the fourth one because you've seen these enough. You don't need to see it again. And if you do, you can rewind. Sorry, but I'm just in that feisty kind of a mood. Okay, and once again, once I get that balanced in the lamp, I'm going to gently pry the top and the bottom of this one loose. And then I'm going to start pushing it gently from the center. This one did not want to stay up on the, in the brush. It wanted to keep falling over. I didn't want to just lay it in there on the on the bottom of the you know inside the lamp because I didn't. I was afraid that stuff might kind of get a little bit softer before from the heat before it cured, and then it would have been flattened on one side. But we're just loosening it. Very gently. I was so afraid I was going to break these. <laughs> I've got the ends loosened. We're going to try to start going out from the middle. And there we go. Okay. Now the rest of them. I've done the rest of them. There, There's four of them now. There they are. I put them in this little tray and I put that back in the lamp for another 60 seconds. Just to make sure they were fully cured on the inside of the curly Q part. And now I'm just going to go in here with some squiggly lines for hair. In hindsight, I didn't need to do this part because it didn't show up anyway. It got covered by the other stuff and you don't see it. 
But my initial thought was if I just glued those curly cues on here with no reference to, you know, any kind of hair or anything else, it was just going to look weird. Um, if, if you don't want to do the curly cues, you could just do this part. Now, you obviously, you'll need to probably paint more hairs than what I ended up painting on here. And if you can paint um, curls that look like the ringlet curls and have them look, look like they should, you know, then you could probably do that. That would probably look good. That would look better. Now, I've cured those for, I guess, flashed those for 30 seconds so my, my skinny lines wouldn't start to, you know, get fat and then uh, run together on me. I added just a few more little hairs here and there, and then I'm going to give it a full cure. But my hand painting skills were not good enough to paint ringlet curls and have them actually look like what they're supposed to be. So that's another reason I went with the 3D ones. But it would look really cute painted with the little, you know, with his face on there and everything. Okay, that's going to get its full cure. Now in the meantime, we're going to go through with the rest of them and give them all a, a matte top coat. All of them except for the Courage Metal one. We're not going to talk about that yet. And that guy's done, so we're going to get him in there with it. I always like to be uh, kind of generous with the matte top because if, you, if it's too thin, they seem to get streaky. But those guys have been cured now, and they're back. And now we're going to finish up this lion, uh, the lion head, basically the lion head now. Now this was a delicate operation, this part. <laughs> You're going to see some ingenuity on some of this. Um, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to put these on and where exactly I was going to put them. Because obviously the shorter two need to be in the middle and the longer ones need to be on the edge. I was really afraid to handle these too much because I, I know they're going to be easy to break. And yet I'm well aware this is not a set that you can wear, like, you know, for everyday wear. This would be one of those things that you'd have to you know, wear for a special occasion or something. And then you'd have to be careful you don't get those caught on anything because I'm pretty sure they'll break fairly easily. But for just for, the, for what we're doing, I thought they were cute. So that's what I did. We're going to just attach all this stuff with uh, gem glue. This took a little bit of trial and error also. Okay, and I'm just going to put the gem glue on. Now I started off putting the glue on to uh, the curly Q thing. I should just say the curl. I thought if I just put the glue on the parts that are going to touch the nail, that would have been sufficient, but I couldn't get it to stay on there very well. So eventually you're just going to see me putting just a long line of glue down the edge of that nail. On top of which, being that it's side, you know, it's the side of the nail, and those things are heavy or heavier than you would expect. I didn't want to stay, so I have to get my uh, my LED flashlight out, and we're gonna have to do that. You know, some of these became a real balancing act, trying to get the the thing to stay where I wanted it and hold everything else, you know, where I need it to be. I just discovered, too, I can set my nail, that nail stand on its side and have it be, you know, since it's got the faucets on there, it stays, you know, in an angle and stuff. I don't know why I never figured that out before, but that was handy once I figured that part out. Because that way it's laying basically almost on its side and the, the uh, curl was not fall off as quickly. It's easier to keep it on there. Okay, now I'm going to get everything ready at once because 
as I said, this was a this was a whole delicate deal here. We gotta get it where we want it. As soon as I get it where I need it to be, eventually, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a cure with this just to hold it in place. Now that if I didn't have this flashlight, I would have had to lay it down inside of the lamp, scrunch down so I could see what's going on in there and probably hold my tweezers in there and hold it up where I wanted it to be. So, I mean, these, this little flashlight has really been a game changer for me for a lot of different things. Mainly for flattening stuff out when I'm putting, you know, embellishments on like chunky glitters and stuff like that. But but for, the, for these kind of things, for heavy... Uh, heavier stuff that I'm gluing on it works great okay and the other long one going to go on there on top of which these these things seem to have had a mind of their own they, every time I get a hold of it it was somehow it's like get out of my tweezers like it was a live snake or a worm or something. <laughs> oh, thank goodness the audio was was changed out from what we first originally had on there. All right, this time I'm going to balance it there against my finger. Hopefully it's going to stay where I need it to stay. All right. Now, quick, get the flashlight. <laughs> you know, it'd be really cool to do a set of nails with Medusa that had those curly cues but had snake ends on the, you know, little snake head ends on them to, for her hair. As I'm looking at this, that's what's going through my mind. Maybe I'll do that at some point, but it's not going to be anytime soon. Okay, now they, they're on there pretty firmly, but I just know if you were to catch those ends on anything, that parts of it are going to snap off. See how that part is sticking up? I wanted to get that attached down. So I'm going to put a little bit more glue right underneath that little bit. And I have to hold it down. I'm going to bend it. It's, they're still flexible, so remember. So I'm going to blend that down. Now, now, of course, if you snap them too far, they will snap and break. But flexible enough for me to bend that little end down and hold it in there. So I can get it to stay down in the glue. Now I am making a bit of a gluey mess with this, but at the end we're going to go back in with the matte top underneath there and cover up all that yucky glue stuff. Okay, that guy is stuck down good now. Now we're going to go to that one I decided to leave alone, although I think I clipped the end of that tip of that one off a little bit. That pointy, jaggedy end looking one. Okay, these other ones were a little bit easier to get on here because uh, we're working now closer to the top of the nail where they're not going to slide off, and plus they have that other one to hold them up. But as you can see, I've pretty much already covered up the hairs that I painted on earlier. Which is why I said if you're going to do this part with the curly cues, you can just skip that other painting step. Now these, I believe I laid both of these on here before I put it in the lamp to let it cure for the full time. trying to figure out if I wanted that to loop through the other one and then I decided I did not 
or it decided for me and, and bailed out. <laughs> Put this in the lamp when I'm done fussing here. I'm gonna give it a full cure. I believe it's back out. Everything looks pretty sturdy on there. I'm gonna clip off a couple of those ends and I'm not gonna show it but there's gonna be one that's gonna have a like a tan color to it because it's the inside of the it's not gonna be the same dark brown as the hairs is what I'm trying to say. That one right there once I clip that off you'll see I do go back with some polish on the end of there and cap that off and I think on the finished one you'll see it looks kind of dark right there, that's why. I was trying to clear out an area in there where I could put the bow in where it was going to have enough surface area of the nail left to stick on good. And that is what we are going to do right now. I'm going to glue her up and shove that bow in there. Now putting this, doing this bow I had to get creative with how I was going to get this on here. Okay, now this is made with gel polish, so as I said before, it is still flexible. Now I wanted to squish it down so it's going to be as much in contact with the big part of the, the nail as I could, but it was popping up. So what I had to do is, and on also, I need to hang on to the nail stand at the same time because the nail thing was not wanting to stay on. So what I end up having to do, you'll see in a minute here. Okay, so you have to have to have one stand one hand to hold the nail stand. That that wasn't gonna work because it wasn't gonna stay firm. One hand for the tweezers. I end up putting the turning on the flashlight and holding it in my mouth. So you're you're not gonna see the top of my head. You're gonna see the beam come in there. I'm holding that in my mouth right now so that I have three hands basically to work with here. You know, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to make things work sometimes. <laughs> Thank goodness my camera wasn't on so nobody could see that. Probably looked more, more ridiculous than anything. But okay, it's on there that uh, briefly we flashed it on and I'm gonna put it back in the lamp and it's gonna get its full cure. And that's happening and now we're going to go back to finishing this courage metal now this is where i'm going to mix up uh well i'm going to mix a couple things but first the inside of the, the metal from the picture i was looking at you know how they on jewelry how they they rub it with like some kind of black stuff and then they wipe it off but the black stuff stays all down in the crevices well that's what i'm aiming for give it a look like that because from the picture, there's a lot of detail down inside of the, you know, in there, which I was not able to paint, being uh, that it's this tiny, number one, and number two, my hand painting skills aren't that good. But I'm just taking a tiny little bit of black polish, mixing it in with some base coat, so I get like a transparent black, <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to use to paint over that. Now I'm going to only paint down the middle. Up there, I'm going to leave a, a, that gold around the border of those uh, clovery looking things and also the edges of the, the cross part. So I'm just going through down the middle with this, this black wash kind of. You really, I don't think it, you can really tell that much, but I'm trying to do my best to make it as close as I could to the picture. Well, the one in the picture has got kind of a horse-looking creature and some leafy stuff in the center above where the ribbon is eventually going to be. Obviously, I had to leave that out. There's no way I could have painted that. 
And then the detail that's down inside of these little clovery looking bits, I couldn't put all that in either. So we ended up with just uh, a straight line, a little straight line in each of those little rounded sections, which we'll get to in a bit. Okay, here's where I decided I don't want to try painting with that mirror polish because I think it's going to dry on me before I can get you know nice thin lines going like I want. So I had recently got some mica powders. I'll show you the, the front of this in a minute here, but um, I got these on Amazon for like, I think $14.95, and that's what it is right there. There were 60, 6 zero, 60 colors. You get three grams of each color. Or like I said, it was like $14.95 or something. And three grams, I know, doesn't seem like a lot, but you really don't need very much at all when you're doing nail art stuff. Now, if you're using it to work with resin and color your resins and whatnot, then yeah, you probably are going to want more at a time than that. But for what I do, the little tiny bits of, the, of it that I use at a time for coloring things, this was a great deal. And I got so many pretty colors, I can't even wait to, to use them. This particular color is called gilding. Obviously, it's a kind of a metallic -y gold. That what I have up there on my palette probably was enough already right there, but I was I wasn't sure, so I just trying to scoop out a little more. It's like it's all stuck to the inside of the envelope because of um, static. But I believe we have enough. Nope, I'm gonna get a little more. I was trying to figure out a better way to get it out of there off of that plasticky stuff, but and I'm going to keep getting more even though I really have enough there. I know I do. So you guys may be seeing me use these to mix colors for things uh, here in the future. I also got another 30 colors in of the Venelisa mud gels. So now I have the full 60 color set of those, which is cool. I finally have a full set of something. <laughs> but those, uh, as I discovered a while back, are great. You can use those for stamping. You can also use them as gel paints, which is what I basically bought them for. Or you can just use them as the polish. So they're pretty versatile. I haven't swatched the, other, the, the new 30 of them yet, but I will eventually. I haven't had time because, well, baby kitties are in the house, and that's where all my spare time is going these days. But I've got that mixed up. I just mixed it into base coat, and eventually I'm going to get myself together here. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to outline that whole uh, metal cross thing and, and the clovery parts, all of that. And then I'm going to put three little lines in the center of uh, the little clover part. Well, I think the first the first one or two of these I do, I mean, I know there's one that, there's at least one that I end up wiping off. This Courage Metal, this one little nail, there was so much wiping off of stuff and redoing. I mean, there's a, I left a little bit of it in, but there's a lot of it I cut out, so. If you guys think it takes a long time by just what you're going to see, you'll probably double that because I wiped things off so many times. At a certain point, I just was like, all right, it's just going to be what it's going to be because I just don't have time to keep doing this. You'll notice that when I get to the, when I get to the ribbon with the word courage on it, you can, if you hold, if the light shines on it right, you can read the C-O-U-R. But by the time you get to the A-G-E, they kind of are getting all wonky. And it just kind of looks like that fake writing you see on stuff when they're trying to make it look like something's got writing on it. Because I just couldn't, my eyes were starting to go cross. I just couldn't see anymore for doing it at that point. This is still day two of my working on this or, or 
afternoon number two, I should say. I will finish painting the Courage Medal at, by the end of this session, and you'll see when I switch to day three, because then I won't have my gloves on. By the time we got to that point, all I had to do was uh, glue on embellishments and give them the final cleanup top coat. I figured I could manage to do that without slopping too much stuff all over my hands. And considering I'm not having any kind of a breakout, I guess I succeeded. <laughs> this was where I wanted to paint these nice, keep them nice and round, and then they were getting like weirdly shaped on some of them. The whole thing was turning into just a blob like that. So here comes a one wipe off. <laughs> now, this is being that we're back to gel. Now I'm just using alcohol for wiping stuff off. <clears throat> I only needed acetone before because that was regular polish. That mirror stuff. I know I'm out of shot. I try to get. I'll, I try to keep it in. And some of this may be out. Now this is more of a like a metal flake uh, look to it as opposed to the original mirror polish I used it has more of a just metallic without the without the kind of glittery look to it. It's a more smooth metallic I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's a little wonky looking. <laughs> I think by this point I was just kind of like, well, I just want to get this done. Let's just get it on here. I'm thinking I may do a really brief video that just shows all of the Wizard of Oz collection together. Um, I probably won't do any voiceover. I'm just going to let it you know, show as it is. Hopefully it's self-explanatory. And anybody that wants to know more about it can go look for the tutorial on the individual ones, although they're not all on there. Uh, I didn't start doing tutorials until after the Dorothy set, which I believe was the third one in the set, in the collection. And I only did, I, sh I did uh, a part of where I showed how to make the flowers that I put on the Dorothy nails, because I had requests for that. And frankly, everybody asking to see that is what got me into doing videos in the first place, because I really had no intention in doing tutorials. But uh, people wanted to know how I did it, so I did that one. And the next set I posted after that, I had people wanting to know if there was a tutorial. So I figured, well, if people are asking for them, they must want to see them. So that's where it all started. And okay, we're getting ready here. That's been cured. Now we're getting ready to start on the, on the ribbon. Now I only did the center of the ribbon. Um, and I wiped this off several times, so I think you're only going to see the last version because this, this video was getting too long. The first couple of times it was up too high and it was blocking, covering up most of that metal part, which on the real original metal, that's where that horse and leaf kind of a thing was on that middle part there. But uh, I moved it down to... And then later on, I thought, well, since it doesn't have that horse part, it looks kind of weird being this low. Maybe I should have left it up closer to the middle, but in the end, I left it where it is right here. And I didn't paint the extra little um, kind of curlier bits on the ends of the ribbon just because it was so tiny. There's no way I, I felt like I would not have been able to paint it. So it would have looked legible that you guys wouldn't have known what it was anyway. It just would have made a bigger, blobbier mess at the end of those. So 
All we got is this banner ribbon in the middle. And as I said, I think this was the third or fourth try at it. was fine right there. If I would have left it alone, it would have been good, but I did something. I messed up something or I decided to change something on there. Well, I think I decided that on the right it was too fat. It didn't, wasn't the same as the other one. I didn't want to make the other side fatter because I liked that look, so I think I'm going to take off part of it and then I just have to fix it back in. Now I was trying to clean it up with just alcohol on my brush, but that little tiny brush was gonna was taking a bit. At some point, I'm gonna go in there with a wipe and clean it up better. See, now it's pointy in the middle where I don't want it either. <laughs> Eesh. that was a delicate part because it was coming off the nail stand and it was wet so now I couldn't really give it a good press down in the center. And now I gotta make it look symmetrical or at least close and get rid of that kind of pointy bit there and in the process I just made another splotch on there with a little hair that was sticking out of my brush. You guys should also know that my drawing skills are not great, so it's not like I can draw stuff just normally and I just can't transfer it to a nail, and my drawing skills are not all that great. So doing these freehand uh, kind of drawn, drawn and hand painted things are way out of my comfort zone, which is why a lot of the times you're going to see me doing stamping or um, transfer foils or stickers, decals, any of those because I can get a much nicer finished look on them than I can with my hand painting. Oh wait, I broke out the cleanup brush. Just want that little dot off of there. Yay! Okay, I think I'm done messing around with that and then it should be going in to get cured and it did and now we're going to paint the word on there. Now I'm going to start in the center with the R because I didn't want to end up with a uh, plan ahead situation where by the time I get to the end of the word the letters are teeny tiny. Um, so I'm going to start with the R which is right in the middle of the word and then I'm going to work backwards out in either direction. Now I may or may not I've left that one. At some point, I know I I, clean, I did wipes off, wipe off on the, this one several times, too. At some point in here, uh, my husband and youngest son came home, so. I think that's when my focus really went out the window. It was already bad enough, but because they were in here talking to me while I was trying to do the second half of this word and it wasn't coming out, I ended up having to chase them out of here. And then uh, I tried it a couple of times. It just wasn't looking the way I was hoping it would. So as like I said, they just got to be, they're sort of kind of the letters, but kind of you can't really read them either. And you can only really read the first part of this if the light is shining on it just in the right way, too. Although once it gets its matte top coat, it is a little easier to see. See, you can sort of kind of see that there's letters there. You know, I could have scrapped that whole part and just did a bigger 
like kind of a shield looking thing in the middle and put a big C on there for courage. And then I could have, that probably would have been easier. It might have looked nicely finished a little better, but it kind of was trying to go with the, how the original one was in the movie as best as I could anyway. Oh, this is where things started to go bad. This is where I'm, people are talking to me. Or I may have already taken, I might have wiped that part off. This may be the second or third attempt. I'm not sure at this point. trying to be oh so careful. By the time I got to the end of there too, my hands starting to get a little shaky. And that was not, not very conducive to painting those teeny tiny lines for the letters on there. When I deem it's good enough, it's going to go in and get it pure. I think before I do the top part. And what do we do? Oh, nope, I decided that I was not happy with that. So I'm taking off part of that. We're going to have to sit through a little bit more of that. Now, I thought I sped this part of the letter painting up because it took me so long. And this may be, this might be sped up. I was moving that slowly that that's uh, just how it is. If you guys happen to be watching this on like a big screen TV, you might actually be able to read the word in there. <laughs> but other than that, you kind of going to need a magnifying glass, I think. <laughs> Actually, I should try it. After, after this is uh, up, I may try watching it on our TV and see what it looks like. Generally, I don't ever, once I get the voiceover done, I don't listen back to any of these. So hopefully if there's anything crazy going on, you guys are going to let me know. Now I'm just outlining the top and bottom, or the, I'm outlining the whole piece of ribbon is basically what I'm doing with the gold. Once that's done, which is going to take a minute here, uh, then I'm going to be curing that. I'll give it a full 60 second cure. That's the side edge. We're going to do the bottom, the other side, and then it should be going in the cure. I guess I've kind of fizzled out of stuff to say. People in my house wouldn't believe it because I say I talk too much, but I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> now this, that, that has been cured. Now this top bit, um, I'm just going to, I just was going to use a real light line of the, that black kind of sheer black I made earlier to paint an outline of this to use as a guide. 
And then in the end, the outline didn't get covered up with the polish. So it was showing. So I ended up re-outlining it with that black again at the end. But we're just going to paint on the, the stripe. We're just going to do start with the red stripes. They got a little skinnier as I went along. They're not exactly straight either. Okay, we're going to cure that. And I am cleaning my brush or doing, I don't know what I'm doing. Frankly, I should have just edited this part out. I might have just flash cured it, and that's why I didn't. But there, this is the white we're going to use. That's part of the pastel collection that I lastly got from uh, Beetle Stuff. And then we're just going to go fill in those white stripes. Now, if you guys had gel paint in appropriate colors, I mean, that probably, that may have worked better. Well, this, this stuff went on good. I didn't have to, like, do any second coats on any of these. So, I mean, it worked out fine for this. The next set I'm going to do, you guys will get after this one, is going to be also hand-painted, but but it's not going to be as this detailed, so hopefully I should be able to handle that one better. And we're going to cure that once I'm happy with it, we're going to cure it. I may or may not be happy with it, I'm not sure. I might have been getting a little loopy by this time I've been working on it so long. I think I was going to try to cover up that black line at the top of where that white stripe is, but either decided against it or it didn't work one of the two oops now I just put white into the red I didn't even know I did that okay this is where I think I decided I was just going to go around it with the black the, the black uh, kind of wash or transparent black. Okay, I don't know what that was about, but I might have decided I should have cured it first. That might be what happened, that I just cured it, and then, then decided to do the black around there. You know, in hindsight, I maybe should have just done it with the gold. But oh well. It is what it is. trying so hard to get nice thin lines around there. I have to say I am getting better with my thinner lines than I used to be even though they're still not the greatest. But there it is. It's all cured. Now we're going to give it a matte top coat like the rest of them. And that's cured and we're moving on. This is the next day three. We're on to all these metal studs. Now I was showing you which ones I was probably going to use. I pulled out all the gold ones that I had. Because I kind of had a vague plan going in. But I've laid out my design. I'm going to do on the thumb. 
the brown thumb. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Now we just have to get it on there. and We're just going to go in with the gem glue that we've been using for everything so far. There it is. Now I will say about working with these these kind of metal little metal stud things is they're concave on the back. They're not flat metal. So you have to get enough glue on whatever you're gluing them on so that the glue gets out to where the edges of them are because that's where they're being that's how they're being held on by just the edges. Or you can put a huge enough blob on that it fills up the whole underside, but that's getting to be a crazy amount and I don't think that's probably going to be a good idea. But just know you can't just do it like rhinestones because there's going to be parts of them that are not going to have glue and they won't be on there. It won't be stuck on there very well. Another thing to note, and I have sped this section up too, but another thing to note is you should go over them with a glossy top coat. Well, you could do matte if you want, but if you put a glossy top or some kind of a top coat over them, it will help that metallic finish stay on there because it, it will wear and you'll get like black spots or, or like it'll come out looking like kind of a tin, tinny metal, like just a cheap yucky. You, you won't like it. Just let's just say that. So now if you're only wearing them for, you know, a short time then you don't need to, but if you're going to, like if I were going to wear a set that has that, I definitely have to because I wear mine for a month at a time. So if I don't put a top coat on, all of the bulk of that is going to be worn off and they're going to look really yucky by the end of there. But anyway, you can get them where you want them. Everything lined up the way you want to have it. And then it will be ready to go in to cure. Oh, I'm going to be carrying a whole rack at a time, so don't worry about that excess glue right now. We'll fix that in a bit. And on the ombre ones, we are just going to put one little square on the top of each of those. Boop. And there it is. You want to make sure you press it down in just to make sure it's actually getting glue where it needs to. And the same thing with this guy. And that is glue sloppage on there that we're going to have to clean up. Also make sure, make sure your nail is on your nail stand uh, perfectly upright because when you put embellishments on, if it isn't, if it's like slightly off to the side, you're not going to have them centered. I've made that mistake numerous times. You'd think I would have learned after the first time. Actually, I, I do it worse when I'm putting embellishments on my own nails because I can't, when I'm looking at them from the top perspective when I'm putting them on, and then I flip them over and look at them like face forward, it's different. The center is different than when I'm looking at them from the top. So I've learned I have to check both ways before I go ahead and cure stuff on there. This is me trying to figure out what I'm going to put on this one. This is the middle finger of the other hand. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do because it, it was not wide enough to support having those uh, teardrop ones going on the sideways, you know, part. And I decided I like these triangle ones better than the squares. So I switched over. That was a broken one. That guy's out of here. Ain't got no time for those broken ones. Also, another thing too is that when you're working on it, if your nail's really curved, these these are not at all flexible. So you have to make sure you, where you're putting them, and they're going to have an ample area to be glued onto. You don't want you don't. What I'm trying to say is you don't want bits of them sticking up and hanging out. Or hanging over because not only are you going to get stuff caught under there, which is aggravating, uh, but you're probably going to pop them off. Okay, that's what we're going with. We're going to be ready to go. 
I believe I sped this up, so it should be quick, fairly quick, or quicker. The heart, and they'll see that's not really centered. So when I put those on, you're going to see me put them on and then move them over a little. I'm basically trying to capture the glue from where it's not in the center and pull it over there to where it's supposed to be. Oh, I don't think I finished my thought on uh, <laughs> on top coating those. Um, I did not top coat the ones on this set. If if somebody were to buy the set, then then yes, I would go back in and top coat all these little pieces. But things haven't been going good for selling stuff, so I wasn't going to worry about it right now. But I'm telling you guys, if you're going to wear these kind of things on there. You really should top coat them. And if I have them on my personal nails that I'm wearing, I do top coat. Sometimes I do on, on the, these. I just didn't do it on this set. Now, I did a set a while back uh, of a military set that I put some of these little gold stars on. And they were it was a matte set that I did in camo. And I did um, top coat over all of those little metallic bits. And the, uh, the, the stars really looked rather cool being to, uh, with a matte top instead of the shiny. So you could go either way with them and they're still going to look neat. And on here we're also putting the little squares at the top. And then this whole rack will be ready to go in for curing. And while that's happening, I'm guessing we're going to start on top coat. Uh, clean up top coat. Also, too, which uh, I didn't do, but in case you get any waxy stuff from your picker-upper thing on, on the shiny bits, you're going to want to clean it off before you top coat. Okay, that rack is ready to go in, and there it goes. And now we're going to move on to clean up top coat, which I'm going to be doing with a detailer brush, because I'm going to go in between all of those little doodads now very carefully not getting it on the metal bits and I'm doing this to, co to cover over any shiny glue that, that's showing and I know there's probably a lot of it because I wasn't super careful on some of these you don't need to do the whole thing all the way out to the edge but when you get out towards the edge of where the end of those metal parts are I'm kind of, I kind of tried to feather it a little bit so you don't just have a hard line of um, top coat right finishing right there. I just gave it a little, a couple little strokes out with the, the brush there. So once it cures, then you won't even see any difference. You know, I got some on there, but you could clean that off of that middle one on the side. And then that one will be ready. And then we're just going to do the same on this one. This has been sped up, obviously. And we're in the home stretch, guys.
much more relaxing to actually watch this being done than to be having to be the one doing it at the time of doing it. Okay, and I just got, there's that one where the big splotch on that one ran down. Whoopsie. Thank goodness I didn't mess that up. Okay. We're going to go in with this whole thing. Oh, whoops, I almost forgot to clean up this guy with this hair. Underneath there, I'm just going to go in with this matte top. I'm just going to smear it up in there. Don't really need to be neat with it. Because that's everything else around there is basically matte. It doesn't matter if you slop it on, onto the, the curls. But you can see where there's an awful lot of globby glue mess in there. As long as it's not shiny, you won't notice it as much. All right, now we're done. Yay, we got to the end. And yay, the end of the collection. Can't even tell you guys how happy I am. If you liked this set, go ahead and give them a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I upload new sets every Saturday. And I really appreciate your watching my channel. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.